Hey guys, good evening and welcome back. This is Donna Sharp with Holistic Wellbeing. Thank you so much for joining me here on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. I do pray and trust that you guys all woke up on the right side of the room. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed my post earlier today and one of the things that I said is a lot of times in life you have to ride the waves, right? So that you can set the tide. You have to get in control of those things in your life that's going to allow you to be on the right playing field at the right time. You know, it's funny because I was speaking with someone yesterday and I explained to them that, you know, a lot of times we don't have control over our lives. God is the one that's in charge of the things that we do. And so many times, so many people try to take control of the situation and take control of where they are in this current place and time because they feel like they have a better plan. You know, but oftentimes God really knows our direction and where we need to be. And as much as you try to do something about it yourself, pretty much all the time, you're going to muddy it up yourself. So I'm just going to encourage you today that as I mentioned in my post earlier from this morning, a lot of times you run, run, run all week. You run, you do everything, you do everything, right? But when do you find that time to sit still so that you can have some time with the Lord? And Sunday is that day of rest. Sunday is a day for you to sit back and reflect and just think about your week and just ask the Lord, are you where you're supposed to be at this particular given time? All right. Now, the only way you're going to hear that is if you quiet your spirit enough, you will hear a nice soft answer as to the next move that you should take and where you should go. But you'll never hear that if you're not still. So I encourage you that, you know, Sundays, try to make it that time where you're really connecting with your spirit and your energy and you're taking a look at the things that you have done throughout the week and the reason for you doing it and the purpose that you set out as to why you're doing those things and just re make sure those are all connected in the right, the, the right way, shape and form. All right. So... I say all that to say is that I, I, I want to be very clear right now and just saying how grateful I am. I'm just in grateful mode right now. And I'm just thanking God for everything that he is doing for me and my family and the blessings that he has bestowed upon us. I try to make sure I'm just grateful every single day, no matter how big or how small. And I one of the things I also make sure that I continue to do is continue to bless people that God the way that God wants me to bless them. Um, and I don't know if you know this, but... A lot of times we are uh, sent certain gifts. Uh, God wants us to use them. But typically when we have gifts, so many people end up going to their grave with their gifts because they're not utilizing those skills that God has given them. So I'm going to encourage you, if you have a gift, if you have something that you're sitting on and you have been waiting to progress along with it, there's no time that's ever going to be the right time. I will tell you from experience, unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there that is not out there for your best interests. And so they will try to do whatever they can to make sure that the situation turns out the way that they want it to turn out, but at your expense. So be very, very conscious when you're going out there and doing things. But I also mentioned to you guys a couple of days ago, if you continue to give and give freely and not look back, God is going to continue to bless you. And it's not the way that you expected it to be. It may be in a whole different format. All right. So tonight, what I'd like to speak with you guys on is uh, daddy dates and mommy dates, all right? So I spoke with you guys uh, just recently also on how to take quality time for yourselves as husband and wives, husband and wives, right? And so today, what I'm speaking on is daddy dates and mommy dates. I'm still speaking from the same book as far as how to create strong families, but I've been on the topic of traditions. How do you build traditions with your children so that when they mature, they too can uh, advance in the same direction, or should I say similar direction, but utilizing their own creativity to make it the way that they would like to see it done for their family. All No two family are going to be the same. So you cannot expect your children who has different personality to do things the way that you do. And a lot of times you guys are old fashioned too, right? <laughs> they, their ways of doing things is more on the young crowd. So you have to let them spread their wings and do things their way. 
excuse me. So this topic today, as far as the attributes that the tradition covers, it's going to be values, communication, education, and individuality. And you'll see why as I'm speaking about them. So I'm going to read, I'm going to read that again. So you can kind of keep that in the back of your mind as I'm speaking on this small section. And you can see how these attributes tie directly into the, the, the area that I'm covering today. All right. So those attributes are values. And you guys are very clear about what values are. Those things that you grow up with, your mommy and daddy teach you and you get old and you say, you know what? These are the things that I always lived by. Right. And then communication, that's pretty clear. <laughs> there's all different forms of communication. There's verbal, there's, you know, written, there's all kind of communication. And then there is education. All right. And then the last one is individuality. Individuality. All right. So kids never, kids need individual time with their parents. Now, if you have more than one child, you know, some family, they like to have big families, five and six children at one time, or they may, you have families that say, listen, I only want two children. That's it. And some like to have 10 children, right? So how do you dedicate your time to each and every child, making sure that their, their needs are being fulfilled, but at the same time, understanding that no two children are going to be alike. You're going to have them come with all different ways of doing things and you have to meet them exactly where they are because we're not all the same. The same way when I spoke with you guys on uh, the different elements and I explained to you the difference between metal people, earth people, fire, and I spoke with you that you have those people that sometimes want to, they could be very organized and if you move one thing out of place, they're going to know that you moved that one thing out of place. And then you have some that may not be organized at all. Things are everywhere, right? And you have parents that may grow up and they're wondering, oh my gosh, is my child ever going to get it? But if you understand the underlying reason why some of these things take place, and it's not necessarily just for that, I'm just using this as an example, then you can step back and say, you know what? I understand why my child does this. And that's because of this is the type of person that they are. So you meet them where they are and you find other ways around getting things done accordingly or having them back off. Because you may have one child that's just so obsessive that every single thing has to be in place. So the minute you move their shoes, they're going to freak out. So there's a way to fix both sides of the spectrum, right? So you have to understand that if you have whatever the, the, the family makeup is, you have to know how to deal with each child differently, but still keeping the whole family together at the same time. So one of the things that's very important is that uh, the children, they need their individual parents time. And it's not this quick on the fly thing where your child is, is requesting your attention and you're talking to them on the fly and you're giving them this quick answer and you expect them to absorb it when you didn't even have a valuable, one of the attributes, communication with them. You're expecting them to uh, just catch what you're saying as you're throwing it and they can't absorb it because there's no quality time in between that, right? So most good listening and good teaching takes place one-to-one. -one. So as I mentioned, if you're doing it on the fly and off the cuff, you'll never be able to get any kind of good sound reward from that relationship with your child unless you're spending some quality time and you're being consistent about it and you're being very methodical about the conversations that you're having with them. All right. So most parents, they're busy, as we all are, and they find it hard to sit down and have a meal with their children, let alone spend individual time with a child. I don't know about you, but one of the things I've always been adamant on is making sure that I sit down with my children, my family and have a meal together. It's not none of this. You stand up and you eat and because you're running out the door, that's just unacceptable. I don't know how many families are out there doing that. But if you're one of those people, I'm going to encourage you that it's not something that I would suggest as to be a good thing, because when you're all sitting and dining and you're all praying together, you're setting a stage for what it needs to look like when they have their own family. And it just says a lot about the quality time that you guys will have in communicating and sharing thoughts and exchanging ideas and answering questions and just meeting them right where they are. All right. So quality time at the dinner table is a good thing and it doesn't get old fashioned. I'm going to tell you right now, it never, ever should get old fashioned. You want to make sure you're constantly setting that stage for them. 
and given them that value, one of the attributes I just spoke on, that they can take into their own families, right? Hi, Linwood. Thank you so much for joining. Welcome. So we each look for our own ways. Some parents try to tuck a child into bed. There's different, there's different uh, traditions that different family will have, okay? Again, no two family are alike. Some like to tuck their children into bed and some uh, sometimes together there, some of them may want to read stories to their children. You'll see some that may say, listen, it's time to go brush your teeth. Let me go in the bathroom with you. And I'm talking about the younger children, but you understand what I mean. Then you have, even on the adolescent or teenage level, you have some parents that may want to make sure that they're always saying goodbye or saying hello to their children. It's just some of the simple things in life. You're always telling your children you love them. I, I don't know. I'm just throwing things out there. So whatever that looks like, it needs to not only happen, it needs to be very consistent because that consistency is what's going to lend itself to that tradition so that when they get older, they'll see that you were serious about what you're doing. And this just wasn't a, a weekend thing, right? And you're trying it and you're saying, okay, that doesn't work. Let me just move on to something else. You'll never be able to keep them stable in that format. Some of the other parents... They'll sit down and talk to their children about their day and how did your day go. Some parents are so busy that they don't have time to really set a meeting time at home. So on the drive time, because maybe the drive time is a long time to school or a long time taking their teens to a job, they want to utilize the time in the car to speak with their children. And that's perfectly fine. But again, make sure whatever you do, it's consistent. It can't be one day today and next thing you're off the cuff the next day. All right. Uh, some try to take individual child to run errands or they have some individual time in the car, as I just mentioned. But there are also many other ways, other pressures and things to do. And the average parent survey shows ends up spending, this, listen to this statistic. This is not good. This is not good at all. All right. The average parent survey shows that the, the average parent spends 12 minutes a month uh, in an individual contact with a child. 12 minutes a month. Do you know how many hours and how many minutes are in a month? 12 minutes doesn't even touch the the level, the caliber, caliber of uh, nice quality conversation that needs to take place in order to develop the relationship with your child. So now when your child is doing something different and you're trying to figure out why is it that they're acting out a certain way and you look at your own child and then you're saying to them, I can't understand how they're doing like this. How can them don't listen? How can them don't do this? A lot of times if you put the mirror and turn it around, you'll see the reason why. All right. So you don't want to always blame them for that particular thing. So that statistic was very disturbing to me. 12 minutes that they're spending with their children. And then when things happen out there, they're wondering, why is my child going in that direction? All right. So always just take a look within. You'll find the answers. Uh, and a tradition, uh, a tradition to combat this is a monthly mommy date or daddy date. So that's the topic we're on tonight. How do you establish mommy time and daddy time so that they can see that you're there and you're there in support of them uh, and being very open and, and, and supportive to them, not just this, you're the one doing the talking and not the listening. All right. And doing the rephrasing the question to them that you're asking them or the conversation so that they understand that you're actively listening it's okay to sit there but if they're speaking and you're not rephrasing what they're saying to make sure that you understand them then hi linwood <laughs> msu nice great to see you welcome welcome so if they if so if you if they don't see that you're actively engaged in the conversation that you're having with them, then it's they're going to fluff you off and they're going to say, listen, I don't think mommy and daddy really take me serious, right? So let me go about my business, go in my room, and go play my this and shut my door and they're going to block you off. So you want to make sure it's something that's genuine that you're, you're spending with them. So those mommy date and the daddy date is a very important thing. You want to be very serious about it and you want to make sure that those dates that you're having with your children is something that they desire to do. It cannot be your idea alone. It has to be communication that takes takes place to, to make sure that they're on the same playing field that you are. All right. So at the start of the month, actually schedule an evening or even a lunch hour with a child and plan what you will do. Like anything else, guys, I mentioned to you in several lives I've done, 
because this is day 513 of me speaking consistently since January the 1st of 2019. So there's a whole lot of live topics there in your memoir. <laughs> so you want to plan like a lunch or a dinner or an evening together. Um, speak about what you're going to do and like anything else that you do in your own life, which you should be doing is setting goals, setting timelines and deadlines so that you're actually accomplishing those goals. So same goes with your child. You want to make sure that it's scheduled. It's also you're talking about the discuss the topics that you guys are going to be speaking on. And so you can always fall back on a conversation you had before and also progress ahead as you're improving on different topics as well. So make sure that you let the child in on the planning. That's pretty much what I just mentioned. Enhance your child's experiences by remembering them through a mommy date, mommy date book. And basically what that is, it serves as a memoir. It serves as a memorabilia, right? It also serves to preserve the memory based on the conversations that you guys have had. This can be just a simple little notebook where each page is one date, almost like a small diary where the child records each date. If he if he's old enough to write, he might have he might make an entry like we went to lunch together at the Mexican restaurant, had a fajita, mom had a taco, and on the way home we saw an ambulance and fire engine at the accident on the freeway. Now don't you think that this will serve as a nice tradition because guess what? Same date one month later, right, or one year later, they're going to be able to look back and say, so what happened in the year 2020 on this time? Oh, I had a date with my mom. It's very similar to when that 9-11 event happened. Any major catastrophe or event that happens in life, a lot of times it sends a message in someone's memory bank where they distinctly remember the time, the place, what they were doing at the given time. It's just interesting how that happens. And don't remember, don't forget that the lives, several lives ago when I spoke on the, 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 the brain, I have to keep going back to that. I spoke on the conscious level, the subconscious, the unconscious. Things are in your memory bank from 10 years ago that you have decided to either bury and not resonate for one reason or another. All right. And the only way a lot of times that resurfaces is when something else draws, draws back attention to that particular that particular title or event in your life. But we are working right now, the average person is working on 10% of their brain. That scares me, I don't know about you. When they're driving on the street with 10% of their thought process, that's a concern, right? So 90% of your thought process lies in your subconscious. And that's pretty much what's happening here. So a lot of these things serve as memory for your children because later on when they grow up, they're gonna be able to pinpoint something that happened on a given day at a given time. And that's because they really, made that connection tradition wise to what it is that they were doing which is beautiful because then they can say i remember when we did this with mommy and i went remember when we did this with daddy and i remember when we went to the beach and when we did camping in the living room they'll distinctly remember those things and again they'll draw on that and do it with their own family probably even in a better way than we did right so even better than writing about the dates to bring something from date from that date that they can tape or staple into a book can help preserve their memory. A ticket, a piece of program from a menu, even a little piece of bark, anything from a place you visited is worth saving. Children even uh, years later will be able to look at whatever they save, staple, taped um, in their mommy book and remember the experience in surfacing detail. What they will remember emotionally or, of course, is a parent who loved them enough to take them places one to one. They don't want to be treated the same as all the other children in a family. You sometimes have to designate an individual time with your son different than you do a time with your daughter. They're on a different level. You love them just the same, but they're, they're, the way that they do certain things, their personality and their traits... It's all going to be different. So you have to make sure you're curtailing your conversations to them at different times. So they both individually feel very, very valued, right? And then if you have six, in Jamaica, we say six pitney. If you have six or ten pitney, more power to you because you have more work to do. <laughs> all right? So listen, before I close, I want to read you this story. Uh, stories. There's three of them. They're very short. And these are from the children ages 10, 12, and 7, and their takeaway from the tradition built by based, by doing mommy and daddy me time. And so here it goes. I'm going to read it verbatim because I don't want to muddy up anything. I want to read it just like it is. 
So this is Eli at the age of 10. He says, one thing I look forward to is going on an outing with my parents, like going shopping, out to eat, or sometimes even going to a really special place that we both love to go. My parents, one would probably be, my favorite one would probably be when we go to the basketball games. When I was little, we used to have a book called the Daddy Date Book. Actually, we still have. We had to get one little souvenir when we went on a daddy date, like the wrapper from a straw. For example, if you went to a, if you went for a malt, one of my favorite ones was going to the zoo. I love that. I brought home a little feather to tape in my daddy date book. Now, can you just imagine a child experiencing this at the age of 10 and then when they're 20 something, 30 something, that memory just gets jarred in their mind. All of a sudden it hits them. And they remember the exact time they walked into the park, the exact time they went to the booth and, and got all of these things. It's just absolutely amazing. It just, a lot of times will just calm any of the storms that they may be going through that given time, just by simply drawing this memory back to the forefront of their mind. And this is Noah, he's 12. He says, I have a little weird book that had a lot of memories in it. I don't know how they all fit in there. Like in some of them, it seems like it was just there, but it was really four years ago. This book has in it a little souvenir from each place we would go on daddy date. Like if we went to a movie, we would bring back a ticket or something. These books are really cool. If I didn't have one, I wouldn't remember half as much as I do with my dad. These books are totally cool. I think you should have them in your family. Now, my question to you as a, as a parent right now, and you're looking back at this Noah at the age of 12, do you actually have a memory book? I can tell you that I actually do. And it's funny when I go back now and I look at when I played high school basketball, college basketball, I said, man, I wore them long socks. They hold them socks this so long. I look like <laughs> the Harlem Globetrotters way back when. But when you look back, you can actually appreciate where you are now and where you were then. And... Um, I don't know. It's just a great way to reminisce and reflect. And I do pray that you also have one of those similar books. And Charity, who's seven, just has a couple of words to say. She says, me and dad or mom, we have what we call daddy and mommy dads. Hmm. We go somewhere special. And it's funny because she can barely spell the, spell the words because that's exactly how they spell it in here. She spells special S-P-E-S-H-L. <laughs> and she spelled mommy, M-O-M-Y, mommy. And that's D-A-T apostrophe S. <laughs> uh, so we go some somewhere special and tack something from there and put it in a book. And she put tack, T-A-K, something. It looked like she write in shorthand in her own way. It's pretty neat. Something S-M-T-I-N-G. Great. And then the last thing she says is, I love those daddy and mommy dads at seven. Can you imagine what she, where she's going to be when she turns older at 30? She's going to look back on this and say, man, this was amazing. So guys, I say all that to say is those mommy and me time mean a lot, you know? And I spoke on yesterday, the times that uh, you should be having with your, your spouse, your partner, and making sure that you, if you have that parent that works outside of the home all the time and one stays home, it's nice to give relief to the one that's at home because working from home is just as hard as working out in the field at times, especially when you're tending to children that are younger up into the, the adolescent group. You have to take them to school. You have to take them to practice. You have to take, it goes on and on. Now, mind you, you guys all had about a two going on three month vacation due to COVID. So it might be a little bit less stressful now, but the bottom line that I'm trying to make is the point is that you have to be able to appreciate people where they are and respect their time as well and, and, and show, meet them in a direction to let them know how much you appreciate them. The same goes for your children. This book that I've been speaking on now for about a month, all right, if you've missed any of these live and you're coming in towards the end, I've been on this subject for one month and we spoke about different things. And how to uh, strengthen the make strong families as far as it pertains to your children. So as we're winding down and we're finishing up the book, I just thought this was just a beautiful thing where they spoke on how do you create that mommy and daddy time. All right. And remember, my children are older. And to this day, I still like to spend quality time with them. 
I, it's funny because my, my daughter's probably listening to me right now. I asked her for a hug last night. I said, I said, Ari, I just need a hug. She's like, okay. And she came and gave me a hug. You know, sometimes you just have to ask for what you need. You never know. And sometimes you have to just give them what you think they need, but they may not ask for. All right. So I wanted to share that with you tonight. I just thought it was a great way of talking about mommy and daddy time and tying it directly into uh, how do you move ahead with doing something as simple as this? And they they did a great job of sharing and breaking this particular area down in this book. So listen, guys, that's all I have for you. As if that's not enough, I'm going to ask that you love this live, not the thumbs up. I don't like the thumbs up. <laughs> there is a way to hit the love button. I figured it out recently. All right. And then uh, share this live with someone else you feel that can benefit from it. If they don't necessarily have that bond and that connection with their own family member right now, even at the level of a teenager, right? Maybe they're not getting the love that they desire and their friends are. So, and if you're one of them, I'm going to encourage you to try to develop that relationship so that you can do otherwise. All right. So share it with someone else that you feel that may be able to use these words of wisdom. I'm going to ask that you do not tell them about it because what that does, you'll muddy up the situation. You want them to hear it from Donna firsthand. All right. But most of all, if you'd like to learn about me, I am a holistic and wellness life coach and I teach people how to transition and transform their mind into just getting a better clarity of life. And based on my expertise of over 30 years on the whole fitness field and uh, nutritional field and medical field, medical related field, I'm just going to tell you guys that I feel that I'm that best coach for you if you're trying to do a transformation in your life. So if you go on to my website, holisticwellbeing.com, and it's not spelled like holistic person, H-O-L-I-S-T, it's spelled the whole person. W H O L E L I S T I C wellbeing dot com. Click on that about section. Uh, there you will find a short biography on myself and why I feel that I'm qualified to take you on a next transition in your life and just take you down a road for a new journey. All right. So that's all I have for you this evening. Linwood, thank you so much for joining. It's great to see you. Uh, Wanda, as always, thank you so much for being here. If any one of you logged on later on, I'm going to ask that you write and type replay. I love conversation. You guys can't directly speak to me right now. So when you're typing your message, it shows me that you're not just listening and nodding your head, but you actually are getting this and you're applying it to your life. So if you're typing something to me and I'm responding and that tells me that you get it. All right. So outside of that, I'll be back again here tomorrow on day 514 to share some more fantastic information with you from this same book as we are quickly winding down. The one last thing I want to share with you guys is I'll no longer be on this platform as of June 1st. I will be on my fan page. So if you were sent a friend request, uh, not a friend request, but a like the page, that's the only way you'll be able to see my messages moving forward as of June 1st. So until then, I bid you guys farewell, and I thank you all for joining. I love you guys if no one told you that, you, that they cared, and I'll see you guys back here again tomorrow. Take care and have a wonderful evening. Ciao.